Hey guys, it's Cody J. Payne back with another video going through a weekly trading review of 2022, August 1, August 1st to the 5th. All right, uh, just going to be reviewing my performance. Uh, let's get into it. So for this week, I actually ended up taking about eight positions, but uh, the trades that closed this week were five positions, and that's what I'll be reviewing. Uh, at the end, I'll go briefly over the open positions at this point, uh, at the end of this week. So, uh, let's get into it. Uh, overall, like had two winners, three losses, uh, almost a two minus two R multiple for the week, and minus one percent gain. So, if we go to Euro USD, was the first position that I took. I believe it was a buying opportunity. Yes, yeah, a buying opportunity. I was playing off a of liquidity play, uh, preempting a daily level. Stop was too tight. Uh, because and I didn't fully observe like what uh let me let me get let me get my bearings right but <laughs> I wasn't full I wasn't fully paying attention to the area that I was actually placing the stop as intentionally as I should have been in the situation. Now ultimately this was the trade here, right? So the idea looking at this level, recognizing that there's sell orders above here, looking for that to be tested. Now, I was actually looking for, which I believe we'll get into that on the next one. I was looking for, yeah, we'll get into that on the next one. But um, there was something that would shift, that should shift my uh, execution on this idea instead of executing it on it as a liquidity opportunity. Should be executing on this as an inverse play uh, for me. Like, and I, I just have specific names of how I define certain setups. So that's one of them and uh, because price had already closed above the liquidity pool like the high of the range that I identified so with that actually happening it's not it's not the same same setup anymore for me and I'm really just looking for the daily level to be tagged in that situation but ultimately let's go to the next pair I ended up getting stopped out and let me bring that up one more time uh, for detail on why that stop is too tight like even though it's outside of the liquidity pool, like right beneath, right, right in this area, like there's a minor hourly level that the stop is right on, like right here, there's a high, there's a low, and spreads across, you can see there's rejections within that area. So that that's, that's a pretty good area to say, hey, price is likely to tag that out, tag that area out a little bit. I could have just, like moved it down one level here and made it off a minor, uh, minor thrust candle of that level. But that's really that's really very very nuanced like situation. Uh, something you definitely got to train. Tra I have to train my eyes to see more easily, like I see the other levels, or be just more intentional about like uh, when I'm placing that stop. Uh, I, I have actually made it a priority over the last. Was it this month, last month, last month, last month? The priority for this month, or at least the next two weeks, have are focusing on my limits, keep my limit orders in. But uh, I'm confident, like I'm confident, like I'll adapt to it. All right, so for this pair, let's first go over like the what I wrote down here: liquidity play below daily level one point two zero seven eight. I was looking for a repeat of. A trade that took on your AUD. Go ahead, open that up real quick. And so this is the trade on your AUD. This on a higher time frame, we have a liquidity pool above here, and I'm looking for a play above it. So before price even reaches this liquidity pool, I'm looking for an opportunity, like reaches it or even breaks through it. I'm looking for an opportunity to enter preempting the level and looking and the main idea is for it to just tag above here but since there's a weekly level right above here I was looking for price to push up a little bit higher so that I could like potentially get more uh, profit out of it and I recognize a, another level above that above the liquidity pool so I was like hey price could continue pushing up here so I'm going to look for price to go to the next level beyond the liquidity pool instead of settling for this uh, to our profit so that's the idea and that's the my friend that I was acting in when I was executing on Euro USD here. Now let's continue 
a difference between the two opportunities price broke and closed above the high that identified the liquidity pool before testing level I was interested in buying. That would define the trade as an inverse play, like I already said, prioritizing entry at low of liquidity pool zone. All right, so the key difference is price closed above here, whereas on the Euro AUD, it did not. And just so we can have the comparison up uh, for when I come back here, I'm gonna put them side by side. All right, so here, before entry, price did not break above the liquidity pool. Here, price broke above the liquidity pool right here in that area. So that's the major difference as far as like when it comes to execution. If I was gonna enter like before the liquidity pool was broken, uh, was this still in August, but that's like overnight, that's er really early. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'd be able to take advantage of that unless I'm looking at it the week before and putting a level here. But in this area, anyway, like in this area, this isn't this isn't a trade for me. Like I can't take this opportunity here, or it's not reasonable for me to take that opportunity with my system right now. <laughs> um, unless I'm trading a lower time frame. Like there's a possible 15 minute setup there, but uh, if I'm focusing on the hourly time frame, definitely not. Let's go here. All right, let's continue. So at the price close to my original target. 1.0279 I adjusted my target to the next H1 level above daily level 1.36 okay 1.3064 I did this because hourly time frame showed a strong engulfing candle closing through the daily level 1.0278 and I was looking for price to visit weekly level the weekly level the prime idea on this here was for the weak level to be tested for a short opportunity aggressive bullish I love the idea all right so this idea I've been tracking I think since the second week of July first or second week of July all right and I'll have to bring up the weekly weekly or daily let's go ahead check daily's pretty good so bring up the daily I'm um, Looking at the higher time frame setup for an inverse play, which coincides with my JCP setup, uh, got an impulse here, got a correction here. I'm looking for this correction to actually come up to the 1.0340 level uh, for an opportunity to sell. I'm looking for the last high, uh, a level above this weekly zone to be tested. Now, I know this is day level mid July, it's about 18. So, and I was looking for price to break above there and come up to here because that would coincide with I believe I believe it had confluence with the Fibonacci level as well. So I was my limit set up there. So I was really just waiting for price to scale up to that point and look to execute for a sale. Now price hasn't tanked down or anything like that yet. So there's still potential, but it's honestly unlikely with this type of rejection in my mind right now. But um, until price breaks these lows, I'm not going to cancel that sale. Let's see. Yeah, so this is the idea. I'm looking for price to scale up to that weekly level. So with that, I'm looking within the, these two candles for a buying opportunity for price to scale up to that weekly level. That's the whole idea there. Because I have a higher time frame sell, this lower time frame uh, buying opportunity could span up. Now this was the second position. This position, uh, I adjusted my stop to where I previously talked about where it would have been better after I originally got stopped out of the first Euro USD position. And uh, my initial target was right here. And like I said, I adjusted my target to the 1.0306 <laughs> level because of that higher time frame idea. I was like, hmm, okay, if this idea is gonna play out, we could see this push up even further. I'm gonna go for it and continue to hold. And my stop is just barely under, uh, barely under my entry. So, Execution on the trade, pretty good. One thing about this, I, I getting a little bit too ambitious with the targets. Um, if this, if I'd say if there was not a break above here, uh, before my entry, I would have been perfectly fine with taking taking the small loser. But uh, but I still can be I. I 
as I was taking this trade, I was considering a liquidity play instead of an inverse play, which it should have been defined as an inverse play for me. So that was just poor on my end. I wasn't specific enough in identifying the opportunity and I traded it differently than what I should have. For inverse plays, I go for really short targets and not really pushing it too far unless it's a higher time frame setup. So that is one thing I could have done better. One of, one of my favorite quotes and that really opened me up, my eyes up to being willing to go for lower R's is prudence dictates exiting positions long before the highs. And I don't know exactly who said this, but I actually got it from a uh, a podcast on chat with traders. Yeah, and I'll bring it up. I think I've actually talked about this before, but this is a podcast with uh, with chat with traders. This guy that talks about like a story he had when the market was just going limit up, limit up in a certain situation. I think it's Chris Caddy. Yeah, Chris Caddy. Episode two thirty five. Yeah, I really, I really like that episode. It's worth li- giving it a listen. So let's continue to Tuesday. Tuesday, AUD USD, uh, ascending channel idea, and you know, like, if you follow me, you know this is one of my favorite ideas for this year right now. Prime entry opportunity came overnight. Saw so I was required to enter a few hours late. Limit concept for this trade is still test in testing phase, but has outperformed manual entry concept stats gathered so far. Let's open that up. All right. Price broke the low zero. Uh, broke the low zero point six nine eleven after the break of the channel, and I did not move stop because the, ch- the candle that closed through the level was not as aggressive as I wanted to see. A decision I would likely make again. Hmm. Yeah, I probably wouldn't move my stop again. Uh, in that situation with with how price broke that certain level which i'll show in a second something to consider in this decision next time is for the type of movement i'm looking for on this idea after the entry so when it comes to my channel ideas what type of movement am i looking for after my entry to actually happen and if i don't get that type of movement how should i react to the situation or how should my management change or is it reasonable for my management management to change if uh for my winners, I'm consistently getting this type of price action, right? Just to protect my downside even more, or be more aggressive in protecting the downside. So I went, I went through, reviewed the screenshots and all the successful ones in the test and live trading. They, the winners were a very aggressive movement with almost no <laughs> retracements for me to scale into position, which is a recurring thing that I've actually talked about saying, like there's. Like this is such a good opportunity, but it almost never gives me an opportunity to add. And adding's really my what I view at least right now in my system as probably my primary edge for me to grow my equity curve. I'm not sure I want to like aggressively. I don't really want to use that word. Like grow my grow my equity curve aggressively. Just to have big winners, <laughs> well, me so, yeah, have big winners at certain points within my trading. Because otherwise, I'm if I just settle for one position, I'm just looking at that one position and looking for it to hit target or not, but managing it like I do, I'm not really able to get outsized returns on a really good position. Uh, similar to the dollar Swiss, uh, Swiss trade that I talked about last week, that was a prime example of how adding can be can change the whole dynamic of of my actual equity curve and how things are going all right um let's continue yeah so without that so knowing um after after the review knowing that hey it's unlikely that i'm actually going to get added positions or i'm not going to get enough out of these on this setup of my added positions if this continues to have a high win rate which the win rate right now is about 80 percent um I could increase my risk, which is something that I've been like, that's what the primary reason for this test is for, but I'm getting too bogged down into my words. Let me just continue and stop talking so much. Review showed it worth, <laughs> worth a quick test. So I'm going to go ahead and test that uh, with 
more aggressive stop movement. So let's go ahead and look at it. So this is the trade. And the idea for the manual entry setup is uh, after we get a price action candle off the retest of the channel, I enter on that candle, on the close of that candle, put my stop above that high, and then I target the bottom of the channel, which is out of view here. Uh, but I have another on the idea screenshots, which I'll add that to here. Let me go ahead and put that in. So yeah, so price broke through this hourly level and this was the break here, right? Now at that point, I'm not gonna move my stop above this level because it's just a weak break to me. Like I'd rather see an aggressive break. Like if we got this candle that close to that, I definitely like that better. Um, I got an immediate retest. Now after that, on the close of this candle, that could have been a stop limit. Um, but the reason I held back is because number one, the initial break was weak or wasn't as strong as I'd like to see. And also with that break, there's potential for price to come back and test this level. So I was seeing, I wanted to wait to give price, I wanted to give price more room to just make a retracement and see if it would come down again. Uh, it didn't, it ended up just hitting stop. Something that just stuck out to me is we've already got an immediate test there, so that invalidates that decision. So that could have allowed for that stop movement in that situation since the level that I'm looking for price to retest has already been tested. Okay. So I could have made this trade better with the aggressive stop movement uh, after price broke below that level, and it would have resulted in the 0.24R. If put in the situation, I'm likely to look to add in that position, which I just talked about. And I went ahead and, like I already said, reviewed, and it's not even worth like looking to add in, in with that type of setup. At least, at least with everything I got, I have gathered now. Okay, Dollar Cad on Dollar Cad descending channel idea. I was hesitant to place a limit at 128.32 because. It was not the last hype we break out. Pre, pre, yeah, not the last hype we break out. But it was the last untested level below the break. I was going back and forth with myself on setting the limit or not and opted to wait for rejection on the level. Once price hit the level, I did not wait for the candle to close because I was headed to the gym. I do not like this action. Um, I wanted to review that later. I'm supposed to wait for the candle to close, but I would have, but I would have been late to meet someone at the gym. What takes priority here? Could have easily solved this issue by placing my limit at the level. Review past simple sizes. Okay, so the level placement for this idea or the limit placement for this idea, it was not, it was irregular. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the placement that I'm used to, all right? And it was just slightly different, okay? <laughs> So first of all, basic decent channel setup, got the break, I'm looking for a price action candle within here or at least a untested level. Now, in my, in my current channel tests, which I talked about in the last trade as well, I'm comparing certain things. Like I'm comparing the manual entry, I'm comparing the limit entry, I'm also comparing uh, stop placement in those situations with my entry with my manual entry is stop placements based off of uh, like I do, like I do, come on. <laughs> Let's just say like I do the limit uh, position, how would that affect the stats of it? Would I get the same amount of losers? Would I have a higher win rate or lower win rate? Um, just, just comparing those type of things and also comparing a bit of the target, right? There's a slight difference in the targets with this position as well that I'm trying to, that uh, I wanna compare. So that's all being tested in that in that situation. And that's what I've been doing for the past, I think it's been three weeks, two, two or three weeks now. Three weeks, definitely. And um, the last high for me would have been here, but we didn't get any price movement there for me to actually look for a buy in that situation. And this was the next level, or at least the next untested level for me to look for an entry. So I was, 
in my test on my limit test this is where i place my limit entry at but uh what i have fully tested is only the manual entry so that's what i was going for here but i needed to wait for this bullish bearish candle to close before entering um ultimately it was like 20 minutes into the <laughs> 20 minutes into the into the hour it was probably it was 15 minutes into the hour because i had a it takes yeah it was 15 minutes into the hour so i had to wait another 45 minutes before that candle closed before the entry and i was like okay dude it's gonna take too long for me to actually get this entry so i'm just gonna enter here and place my stop as if it's a thrust scandal otherwise hmm, that's actually interesting what would what would that change the r2 in that situation let me bring that up so you guys have a closer look i mean it doesn't matter too much but it's definitely higher r of course because for for this position my stop is under if, if i wait for the candle close my stop is under here under that candle We still got about 20 minutes for that. Dollar CAD. That's kind of crazy. It's actually pretty insane. Um, no, that's the wrong one. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, it's still crazy. That's even that's even bigger. So it would be about 32R if I waited for the candle close, at least for the potential. Ultimately, like I know like this didn't pan out. Price ended up scaling, uh, retesting this daily level before continuing up, which is going to be one of the last things I review today. Um, but yeah, like sol solving that issue, if, if I'm crunch for time, that limit order is going to help me a lot. So like just finishing the stats, uh, have it completed for two pairs so far, which is AUD. Oh, I'm almost done with, uh, AUD USD. I completed it for Euro USD. I just have to complete AUD USD and I have... 12 other pairs to get through so uh keep taking steps and get there next edusd basic jcp entry self safe entry variation did i skip one no 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 this is right so let's do a quick breakdown of what I wrote down, everything about this trade is perfect for this setup as far as initial execution goes. Through my reviews and others, I begin to convince myself it's detrimental for me to pay attention to more than two pairs with open positions. Uh, so I was doing reviews with some people uh, about my performance on July. Like we just share share reviews and see any kinks in our armor that we can like figure out how to do better the following month and focus on. At the time I had three pairs three positions open across three different pairs. I don't believe two is my ultimate limit because I know I can trade like five pairs at a time or used to trading five pairs at a time. But I know like uh, it's not good for me. <laughs> uh, but, I, but I have much, uh, so that's not good, yeah, not at all. But I have had a much better equity curve when I focus on two or, or one pairs right now uh, this led me to doubt my position because I started flipping through my three positions. I realized I was wasting time and stressing myself out. So I got rid of the position so I could be calm enough to do something productive with my time. Risk was not an issue here, so why am I stressed? So that was the question I ended up asking. Like, why, why am I stressing out about being over in three positions or whatever number of positions, even though my risk is taken care of? I'm not even close to my, in this situation, I wasn't even close to my daily limit um across those three positions um i'll say it definitely hurts like just taking like t taking three positions and just losing all three of them <laughs> and um why does it hurt
How can I explain why I guess I get flustered in that situation? Okay. So I'm, I'm, what I want to do is put myself in the situation again and recognize like what, what am I thinking during that time so I can get a better understanding of why I'm getting stressed out, that type of thing. And figure out if I can solve the problem. Uh, definitely gonna do that on my testing account. <laughs> Not gonna do that on the my main accounts. So, one thing I could have done better. I mean, would it have the same impact? I probably have to do it on the main accounts because it may not have the same impact. We'll we'll figure it out. Like I'll start with the tester account. Like take three, four positions if their opportunities are there. Like if I notice, hey. I'm in these opportunities, but I can take these other two. I'll do that. Okay, and I'll figure that out. Uh, one thing I could have done better in the situation is place my target like a JCP setup, which would be the low of the pattern. I uh, placed my target as if I uh, was trading the original ascending channel idea. Since price hit the entry high of the chan the idea, AC idea is gone, and I should not be. I should not be using the parameters <laughs> I should not be used for parameters and I should not be using the parameters for the AC setup what they should say is and the parameters for the AC setup should not be used that's what that should say so anyway so if you remember from earlier ADUSD sitting channel targeting the slow that's essentially what I did in the same situation um, this was a prime entry stop above here. If price comes back up to this level, that invalidates the AC setup. In this situation, I've got a perfect JCP setup, which, like, I love this position. Stops in a beautiful place. It's it's awesome. Uh, the only flaw here that I that I recognize is place my target based off the ascending channel instead of based off the low of the pattern. Uh, I started to trade the target as if it was the AC setup instead of just. Uh, the JCP that's presented so specificity over the last was that the last two target no that, that was uh, one of the first ones I reviewed your USD your USD and AUD USD having specificity on both of those specifying like detail like be more specific about what opportunity i'm actually trading would help me out a lot um what actual steps can i do to do that i know something that really helped me out was i think a year or two years ago it's actually journaling the position before taking the position so if i knew there was an opportunity that i was going to take i'd journal it uh, now I journal at the end of my day when I'm doing my daily review, but if I do it like before the actual trade's taken, I'll say, okay, here are all the parameters. This is the exact setup. This is why I'm taking this setup. These are all the confirmations type of thing. Uh, just being more intentional about that, being intentional about doing that may help me out with specificity, uh, to make it more of a habit. Uh, since there's a lot more, there's a lot more nuances to the things I do now. Okay, so the other two positions that I took were Dollar CAD, and I'm just going to map out the plan, uh, or talk about the plan, because in next week's review, I'll go ahead and actually go over the, how that in actually ended up, how I execute on those positions, that type of thing, and reviews. Okay, if a valid exhaust candle comes, I'll enter. All right, so on the channel ideas, I actually do risk more. Um, because I ended up getting, because I, I completed my test to figure out if I could risk more or not. So I can do that. So that's what I was looking for. I was looking for exhaustion down here near this low here. All right, and this this day level ultimately ended up being adjusted slightly. Um, but yeah, so okay, let me 
go here. Sorry, I was just thinking. So the idea here, the idea here, uh, set up, mapped out perfectly, um, got the break here, looking for the test here, and looking for failure of this level. And all that actually ended up happening, this was the first position for the week, ended up in a small, uh, small winner. And this was the next position, the price was not coming back down below this level, and I was looking to just re-enter the position, because I noticed, hey, why is my stop below or above this daily daily trend line, or not daily trend line, but daily level. And in the previous situation, my, I see I see why I made that error, that stop placement error, is because my daily level wasn't in the right position. I believe I was basing off a high when it should have been based off a low. Uh, either that or I went too far out of the range. I'll have to go back and actually review that. And note down, note down the reason for that. But this is also the entry. I just got rejections below this level. I was like, okay, let me go ahead and re-enter this and put my stop below here and look for that push up because this is a very good opportunity. Everything's like falling in line. Uh, so, yeah, that that's the setup. That's the other trade that I took for this week and ended up holding over the weekend. The next one. UJ. UJ limit activated overnight. The position is fading. A pretty aggressive move to the downside. Good sign that price is respecting 130.58 on the day close. Okay, this one where I added positions. This was like a really nice trade. Uh, and we need to go deeper into the week to get the to get the old, like the actual positions I ended up doing for that. UJ, UJ, UJ. Okay, so this is UJ for, that was last week. Okay, it actually ended up hitting targets for last week. Um, I, since this setup and this, like this original setup is actually based off of a higher time frame, higher time frame levels, I'm looking for price to actually push beyond like pretty aggressively. So again, man, hmm, that's a pattern. Again, I adjusted my targets. Oh, uh, okay. So. I'm not mad about it, adjusting targets here. Like my stop is up here right now and price is in this area at the moment. Uh, but I think I'm moving my targets uh, too much, all right? <laughs> Sometimes I, like there needs to be times where I just take the profit that price immediately gives me. Um, in this situation, like if I were to be like, bare bones like to, to my strategy my target would be all the way up there at a freaking weekly level right now um in that situation throughout playing i was like hey that's pretty unreasonable let me just go for this short target here and then i saw an opportunity to add and i was like okay this is my opportunity to add let me see if i can scale up a little bit more hmm, probably uh, probably a thing that went through my mind was like this opportunity to add took in some of the loss that was here. So it's not that great of an add. Well, it's a great add because like I'm getting more profit than what I would have if I just kept that position on. Uh, it's still beneficial, but it's not often that I get at, at a position that aren't that, that are this small size. So that, that could be a factor. Uh, maybe thinking, in, maybe thinking about my, the potential PL and the actual PL and what this opportunity actually presents. And I'm actually looking for another added position. Okay, I remember. I remember. So the real thing, the real reason, I wanted an added position. I wanted to see another added position on this pair. 
but I wanted the out of position to have actual profit in it in on it. Um, like I said, I, I'm not comfortable with sharing like how I add into positions right now. But honestly, you guys can figure it out if you like pay attention to when I add and how I talk about my out of positions, and you'll probably understand it when I understand a little bit of it when I say it here. Uh, utilizing the risk, like my let's say for instance, my stop is here, but my targets targets up here at this level. I'm looking for the daily level to break, or let's say I'm looking for 134.54 to break. I'm looking for a round retest to add to that position. I'll use the whatever profit I have and add my uh, risk there, and look for look add my full risk back onto the position and look for price to target uh, whatever my target is, which. First, it's the daily level, then it's this next level up here. But with how price has evolved, which um, it's in a later screenshot, but we'll keep this stop. Now I feel lazy, so I guess I'm bringing up the later screenshot. This dollar CAD, dollar yen. I need to go to end of day. Here you go. All right, so this is what ended up happening uh, for that week. Um, so I'm still in position. My stop is below here. Now, if I was going to be conservative, my stop, I would just take profits here or take profits now where price is. Uh, I believe price is a bit higher. I think I'm wrong on that. Yeah, price is still right here in this area, and it's actually probably tanking right now. Um. But yeah, okay, so what, what I'm trying to, I guess I'm trying to come to a conclusion too fast, but why am I moving my target so, so often, or what situations am I moving my target, and is it reasonable for me to move my targets in those situations, how should I be adjusting targets when there's a prime opportunity, and when should I maintain the conservative approach and just accept the first target that I have? Um, some questions to answer. Some things to review. Okay, let's go back to oops, the WTR. Well, oh, that's on the fourth or something. Here you go. Yeah, one. One thing um, that I've kind of been putting off is editing my, like I edit, I edited my trading plan Q two. No, it was like at the beginning of Q two, beginning of Q, or end of Q one. But there's some things that I need to add change in there um and update but um coming up with so many ideas <laughs> that i want to i want to test before adding it to the trading plan and i think that's forever going to happen i just need to i just need to take action and just edit the trading plan with everything that i have collected right now and then just move forward later like add the new things when i have them done I should probably update my trading plan either once every six months or once every year and just take all the lessons from the year that sounds kind of dope let me stop so hope you guys enjoyed the video and i will catch you in the next one